Hello ladies and gents, Rome Reviews here, please like, comment, subscribe, this is my review for, dun dun da the one, the only, The Umbrella Academy, it's a Netflix original series, and it's fantastic, this is full of spoilers, so I'm not gonna go over every little thing, I just wanna go over some stuff that really stood out to me for this first season, it's, it's anywhere from like, 45 to an um, minutes to an hour long each episode like i said there is 10 of them it's really good it's a it, it gets you hooked from the first episode because in the first episode you have you see this i, I don't know if you can call them a couple but they like each other this man this woman and, and they're at a swim they're at a pool and the man actually kisses the woman and then next thing you know we see that she is pregnant. She wasn't pregnant before the kiss, but she was pregnant after the kiss, had birth, and apparently there were at least 43 other, 42 other cases of women getting pregnant, um, you know, at some point during the day and giving birth. And so the, the premise of this whole story is that there's this billionaire. He's, he's a douche. He's this billionaire who decides that he wants to go and get the kids for himself, so he'll pay for them. Um, I, I think his name is Sir Reginald, but we don't need to say his name, because like I said, he had a nasty disposition. He was able to get seven of them, because his pitch was, I believe that your kids are, your child is extraordinary, and I want to see their full potential. And he was able to get seven parents that were willing to go and give their kids up. I should say seven moms. I shouldn't say seven parents. Seven moms who were willing to do it. And he then started this Umbrella Academy. At first, I thought it was an academy where he was going to be able to recruit more of the kids. And maybe that was his goal. But that didn't happen. What happened was the academy had seven. Somehow it quickly went down to five because... Uh, the kids, the father, he looked at them, like I said, he, he didn't look at them as his own kids, really. He looked at them as tools. He had some general compassion. Um, that compassion was he created this robot, which they called Mom. And, you know, good-looking blonde woman, but she's actually a robot. She was programmed to take care of the children. All the kids call her Mom because that's the only mother that they know. And, of course, she's super nice, and she's essentially everything that the fa that the father wasn't, and that's why he created her to have that counterbalance. Now, the father dies. He dies in the first episode. That's what brings the family back together, um, and they're a mess. Their family is a mess. They do not operate like siblings should. You have Diego, who's one of the seven, who he has a proclivity to go and be this vigilante, if you will. Apparently, he was actually also a police officer, or at least he attempted to become one, but he got kicked out of the academy because he's a real do-gooder. And it's from what it sounds like, we see that the kids were actually training to be just that, because we see them... In one of the episodes, they actually would go, and maybe it was, it was all in the first episode, um, the father wanted to expose them to the world, so he trained them in the house. You can see all throughout the house that's now run down, um, all these different rules and regulations that they had to stick to, and uh, he has the six of them go wild because... The seventh one, who is Vanya, who's actually Ellen Page. I didn't know she was going to be in this. Neither did I realize that Mary J. Blige is in this. Ellen Page uh, didn't have powers. That's the story that we were told. And I said, oh, that's a lie. This man would not keep her around if she did not have powers. I, nope, 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 nope. And she was always separated. She built up a complex because the six of them went and did, you know, they trained, did a bunch of stuff. But she was not a part of it. And so there was a fifth one who never got a name because the fathers didn't give out names. The mom at one point wanted to, you know, give them names. So she did. But the father did not. And because the father uh, did not, five, who uh, was is technically the fifth child, he had the ability to teleport. But his abilities improved. And so he teleported apparently to the future. In the first episode, 
when he's coming back from the future, you see an old man and then it turns into the brother that they remember. Um, but he, he, and he has a complex when he was in his, his character is a mess. He is a mess. He's like the, the mindset of a 56 year old, but in a 13 year old's body, it's crazy. It is crazy. And to make matters worse, while he was there in the future for decades, he was the only living person. He was the only living person. He had a girlfriend or a wife, uh, whatever you want to call her. And I said, but if you're on the, if you were the only person, how is he was saying he had to live off of cockroaches and do this and do that and, and eat from garbage for decades. And his girlfriend was a mannequin. That's how messed up he was. His girlfriend was a mannequin and he, um, his whole premise was he came back to protect his family. Apparently he worked for this company and this company was designed to guard time. So his abilities to teleport intrigued them. The woman who was one of the head honchos came back around and visited him in the future and told him, we'll give you a choice. You can stay here or you could become a time mercenary. So essentially they're the time guardians and these time guardians, even though they have like a 1950s, 1960s get up in their office, their whole goal is to make sure that the future happens as it should and that any anomalies are killed or taken out, or they'll go and make sure that if this person needs to die, they'll go and do it instead of whoever the original person was to make sure the timeline lasts. Now, Five's whole goal was maybe I can find a way back to my family. Once he did that and then realized that they were still after him, he had to do another thing. He had to go and join them again so that he could go and figure out how to stop the apocalypse because it took him until almost the end of the season to finally tell everyone what's really going on. They slowly had to drag it out of him because he's been working solo dolo for so long that that's all he knew how to really operate. And I mean, this kid was drinking up a storm. He was cursing. He could fight though. He could fight and he could kill. But eventually he realized that's not what he wanted in life. Um, at one point, the his family was in danger. So he had to go and join uh, back that, join that organization again to try and see if he can get a leg up. He was able to, and because he was able to, he was able to destroy their briefcase. Now follow this with me. They have briefcases for regular people to time travel. And the people who were, and they also signed people to go and kill the anomalies. Because he became an anomaly, Chi Chi, Chi Chi and Hazel were assigned to go after him. And Hazel's the guy, Chi Chi is the woman. Chi Chi is Mary J. Blige. And I said, oh my gosh, this is going to be a nice time. This is going to be a nice time. I loved Mary in this role. She was not playing around. She was the one like, we need to kill this person. We need to kill that person. Hazel, you can tell that his heart wasn't really in it. But for hers, it was, this is our job. This is what we need to do. So get your head in the game. Get your head in the game, Troy. <laughs> High school musical. Anyway, so they were tasked to go after him. Now, unfortunately, because he didn't tell his family what was going on, they went after his family instead. And actually, that was uh, that was like halfway through and the house got messed up. They actually were able to kidnap Klaus. Now, Klaus was one of my favorite characters. I, I love all the characters. But as far as like people who, as soon as they came on the screen, I really enjoyed Klaus. He is a, unfortunately, he's a drug addict. He's a drug addict. He's gay, but he is so entertaining and always wearing stuff that you're like, really? He was trying to pull for his father. His father was dead, what, like maybe a day or two? And he was already trying to steal from him so that he can go and pawn it to feed his drug addiction. But I feel bad for Klaus because Klaus, his addiction stems from his fear of his power. His ability is he can commute. Well, the basic level of his ability is he can communicate with the dead. The more advanced is that he could actually, and th throughout the season, when he finally um, sobered up enough, because we see another person, Ben. Ben is number six, a part of that family. Ben 
It looked like he had the ability, it looked like he had, like, a monster inside of him, maybe it looked like an octopus monster, that he was able to, like, the Kraken, so he was able to unleash that and kill people, but he hated his power, he hated his power, he died, no one ever said how Ben died, but Ben was there throughout the entire season, it looks like he'll be there, period, because Ben is, like, Klaus's conscience, He's always there to kind of watch, hey, what are you doing? What are you doing? And Klaus is always, and I guess because of their connection and the powers, even when, uh, as long as Klaus isn't completely 100% hide out his mind, Ben can reach him. Klaus was trying to communicate with other people and it didn't work. He couldn't communicate with his father until the very end of the first season. He uh, was actually also trying to communicate with his ex-lover who... At one point, Klaus, after he got kidnapped by Chi-Chi and Hazel and got broken free by, we'll talk about Diego soon, um, Diego's ex-girlfriend, he takes their briefcase. Remember, you can time travel. He time traveled to the past, to the war, and he was in the middle of it, and his ex-boyfriend was killed. So he part the main goal of him trying to get sober was to see his ex. Um, but the good thing is that he uh once that was only the start and so we'll stop there let's go to diego like i said diego good doer his ability seems to be accuracy and precision with i'll just say sharp objects and he mainly used knives he would go and try to you know whatever cases the police maybe they couldn't fully handle and work due to the fact that they had rules he was a vigilante so he went over those rules he had this girlfriend really cute girl end up getting killed while trying to save klaus um and so he kind of went rogue for a little bit they got him back but the whole point is let's talk about luther luther is buff and i said his body doesn't match his head and that and i know why now so the thing with Luther is, and I was trying to figure out what is his abilities because I don't know if he just has, you know, enhanced strength and, you know, other abilities, but he was on the moon. His father sent him on the moon and he thought that it was for a greater purpose. He, he went on a drinking and drug bender and actually let loose for the first time and actually lost his virginity all in the same night. <laughs> Once he found out that wasn't the case because he's this really you know, uptight do-gooder that was supposed to be the leader of the group. His father, you know, took advantage of that, sent him on the mission that he shouldn't have gone on by himself, basically died. And there's actually this animated talking uh, monkey that is, you know, has been a part of the family since the beginning. And he's been also watching over them. And he... Um, his DNA was used to save Luther. So as a result, Luther is no longer just a human or whatever he was to begin with. Um, he's very hairy and very buff as a, as a result and very self-conscious about that, as you can imagine, because he was a pretty boy um, originally. His face is still pretty much the same, but everything else has changed. Now, let's talk about Allison. So Allison, free girl who has the ability to, I heard a rumor. So she's able to manipulate people. She's able to place suggestive thoughts in their mind that they can't supersede. So it's a form of mind control, but she releases it by saying, I heard a rumor. And that uh, it got her in trouble. She used it on her daughter multiple times. Her controlling, I guess, maybe mentally abusive ex-husband heard it and divorced her and then wanted full custody and so she had to go through that and then we later find out that she used her power on Vanya Vanya why am I looking down while I'm not even looking at the names anyway Vanya poor girl she felt like the outcast because she was the one who didn't have powers she was the one who um wasn't included in anything that her other siblings were included and so also she has a sister and she doesn't have a relationship with her sister what ends up happening is she meets this dude who i didn't like from the start i knew he was the villain i knew he was the villain he's the villain and his whole premise was to use her he wanted to use her oh lenard 
So Lennard wanted to use her because he had the vendetta against the family because he had an abusive father who he actually killed and he changed his name. His whole purpose was to use her against the family to enact revenge. He figured she must have had some powers because when Klaus went and stole his, some of his father's um you know, important papers, there was this notebook that had information about Vanya. Vanya has the ability to manipulate sound and use it as a weapon, which is sick. And now that Leonard knew, he went on this training um, binge to try and get her powers to release. And he actually set up an attack for these guys to go and beat him up to force the power out of her that worked then he took her to a secluded area in the woods to for her to practice her powers and thankfully allison realized something wasn't right with him so then she did her research realized that oh no he's a bad guy he's after our family um he's using her she goes and tries to talk to vanya vanya's pissed but at this time she's already activated her powers and because it's emotion based her powers get stronger the more upset she is and she isn't in control of over her emotions um also you don't know this but vanya was taking medication to, to kind of dull her light if you will to dull her light um to dull her personality to make sure that she wouldn't get too emotional for her powers to not surface um she's a vile she plays the violin so that's how leonard got to her he said he wanted to learn violin i said mm, yeah okay and he actually even killed the first chair that was in Vanya's way. When Vanya's powers were activated, she was able to manipulate the um, her teacher and got the first chair roll. And so now we have Allison who tries to save Vanya. Things go south. She's Because Allison was going to use her power on her again. Allison used her power to wipe Vanya's memory. And um, she was told to do that as a kid. She didn't just go and do that. And it sucked. It, it was sucked. So then... Um, Vanya was pissed, slashed her throat. Thankfully, Allison lived, but the whole premise was now Luther, who um, actually loved Vanya in a non-brother-sister capacity, not Vanya, Allison in a non-brother-sister capacity said, oh no, Vanya has to be taken down. And because of that, he locks her up in the same cell that she was locked in as a kid when her father was trying to figure out how to control her powers in the first place. Terrible, terrible. Worst thing you could think of. And so then she lets loose. Her powers go wild. She goes Jean Grey on us slash Phoenix and she busts out of there. She uses her own heartbeat, which I thought she would have used to make, you know, use that sound from that to break open the cell. She destroyed the, um, the building their house she killed the um you know the family you know talking monkey and that sucked because <laughs> he knew about this and so she was pissed he knew about a lot of stuff so i knew he was gonna die eventually i mean he knew that the mother was made to um he helped the mother go and kill the father just so that all the kids will come back together because the father, we find out the father knew that there was an apocalyptic um, situation coming and he needed to use the kids. So that's why he did all of that. How he knew, we still don't know. Um, so we end the season with Mary J. Well, I forgot to tell you that Hazel found a lover. Mary J. was pissed because um, actually five went and orchestrated it for them to go and kill each other while he was working for the same organization. And... Uh, they end up killing the woman that f was in control of the organization and the world gets blown up anyway. It gets blown up anyway, but not in the way that we think. It gets blown up because they had to stop Vanya. She was doing her, um, she was a part of her orchestra and her powers are amplifying in the amphitheater. And the goal was, Allison's goal was to apologize to her sister, love her sister. The brother said, no, she can't be trusted. So... <laughs> They tried to attack her. She got pissed. Um, Allison was able... She didn't shoot her because she could have, but she shot you know, her ear, which canceled out her focus. And she gets knocked out. The world's still ending because her concentrated power shot out into the sky, hit the moon. And so it was the moon that went and destroyed the earth. 
not Vanya just by herself. She didn't just go rogue and have this power and just blow up the earth like they thought. And so then to try and save everyone. Oh, let me backpedal a little bit. Now, Klaus being sober, he was able to use his powers more. And part of his power is manipulation of soul manipulation. That's what I'll call it. He has the ability to not only communicate with the dead, he can use, he can make them physical. He can physically manifest their being. And so he used that on his brother, Ben, to use his power. So that is going to be sick. And I said, oh, they're not playing for season two. I am ready. Anyway, Five, who's a time traveler, ends up telling everyone, hey, I'm going to use my power on all of you. And that, that's the only way we're going to survive. Unfortunately for Five, well, what will be interesting is it looks like for season two, we're going to see them as young kids again. That's what we're mainly going to see them as because of the fact that his power, he was able to go back in time by switch his body reverting back to his younger self. It looks like the same thing is going to happen to all of them. They're going to all revert back to being kids in order for his power to be strong enough to take them to, what is it, the past? I'm trying to remember. Yeah, because they have to go to the past. So I guess they're going to have to go to the past, you know, figure out how to stop Vanya from going rogue. And I'm so happy and excited for season two. Sidebar, I have another channel, Romy Whispers ASMR. Please go there and support. And I love this. I'll be doing the recap for season two whenever it comes out. I'm so excited. This is This was amazing. This was excellent. I loved it. Each and every episode for different reasons. You have to watch it. I gave you a very Cliff Notes condensed version of some big important moments. But there was a lot of comedy. A lot of comedy. A lot of humor. But it was all balanced. The best thing about this show is that you have, you find out their backstories. And you believe it. It doesn't feel like a stretch. You can see all of them having those issues. For real. So that's it. Please like, comment, subscribe. Thank you, thank you. Support my other channel. Link below, link above.